What's up everyone, back for another Skyrim build video and for this week we'll be going over the wretched fiend, an outcast from his homeland who has a seething hatred for the living. Blessed with the mirror's gifts, the fiend has the ability to produce some of the most powerful poisons that are so vile, so toxic that even those who are immune cannot resist its effects. His use of poisons come from all types of sources, through spell casting, from the shadows, spreading from his minions and even inflicting them from his claws. And by claws, I also mean lycanthropy. Namira has also granted the fiend to turn into a terrifying beast that can shred his opponents through sheer savagery. With that in mind, this is more of a hybrid build combining the brutal playstyle of being a werewolf with the creativity of an assassin. Both styles make use of poisons and disease magic that can afflict any subject, including creatures and the undead, so there's plenty of ways to deal with all types of enemies. Starting with the racial overhaul Imperius, Argonians have the amphibious ability where after swimming they can sneak better for 60 seconds and move faster for twice that amount. There's also Hisborn, where if enemy attributes fall below 20%, they can regenerate at a rapid pace which can ensure some survivability in dangerous situations. Lastly, there's the once per day power, Caustic Spit, that reduces a large amount of armor points and magic resistance on the target. This also causes the target to stagger for a second, so following up with a power attack can deal some serious damage. For the standing stones, I went with the serpent. In the Andromeda mod, sneaking and sneak attacks are more effective as long as you have magicka remaining. However, sneaking causes magicka to drain 10 points per second. While this puts you at a disadvantage, for Argonians the Hisborn ability will actually prevent your magicka from reaching zero so all the bonuses to sneaking are still in effect. Your magicka though has to be around at least 150 for it to work, so you may want to start off with another standing stone before taking it. The serpent's once per day power, Star Curse, steals all the target's magicka and stamina and this is done silently, so it's a useful ability when relying on stealth. With the Winter Sun mod, the fiend will of course be worshipping Namira, the Lady of Decay. In order to start following her, you'll need to complete her danger quest by obtaining her ring, which can be done as early as possible. By following her, you reduce a certain amount of poison resistance on enemies within 40 feet, and this number will increase as your favor with the mirror will. Once you obtain the 100% threshold, you'll be granted the Necrophage ability. With this passive, poisoning the targets inflicts them with disease damage that will rapidly drain their health. While this doesn't affect spellcasting, you can still achieve this by placing human flesh or hearts in their inventory and this will play a part of the fiend's playstyle. Moving on to the werewolf part of the build, which will be covered by the growl mod, growl includes adding ratio abilities for those inflicted with lycanthropy. For Argonians, unarmed attacks in beast form also deal poison damage which become more powerful as you level up. In its skill tree, I firstly focus on acquiring survivability perks like Animal Vigor, Gorging, and Improved Bloodthirst. Unlike the vanilla version, Growl implements armor scaling while in beast form, but since the fiend doesn't have a very high armor rating, you're still vulnerable to attacks, especially to silver weapons and fire damage. For the melee perks, attacks in beast form are incredibly strong that you don't really have to max out beast deal strength unless you want to be overpowered. With perks like Feral Instinct and Roll Kill, standing and running power attacks can one-shot most enemies, including higher level ones, so you can invest points into them afterwards. As for the house, I just stuck with the Terror version, mainly because I didn't do the companion questline to acquire the other ones. I figure a worshipper of Namira wouldn't want to join a guild full of warriors, especially since the circle are followers of her scene, and earning gold by helping out others doesn't really fit their personality. Therefore, in order to become a werewolf, and this is a feature with this mod, you have to sleep outside at night when it is clear. This will grant you the option to turn into a werewolf when doing so. With Ornator covering the perks of this build, the Fiend will have a major focus in the light armor and sneak skill trees. While most of these are for his mortal form, the unarmed perks also apply to his beast form that will make his claw attacks even more powerful. 
Meanwhile, perks in alchemy, restoration, pickpocket, and enchanting will provide plenty of ways of poisoning his targets. Focusing on the unarmed skills with iron fists, increased unarmed damage is scaled towards your current stamina, so investing more points into stamina than health and magicka is highly recommended if you want to max out melee damage. You also notice that both Russian Titan and Sweeping Wind are tied towards movement speed for increasing unarmed damage. This also works with the Lycanthropic Speed perk from the Werewolf Skill Tree for even more damage. Lastly, there's the Hissing Dragon perk, which adds magic damage to unarmed attacks. By selecting the Poison option, your claw attacks will be able to do even more poison damage on top of the Argonian's Ratio ability. Rest of the light armor perks are more about better defenses as well as movement speed, so some much needed survivability skills. However, unlike the unarmed skills, they are not applied in beast form since werewolves are labeled as unarmored, but since this build relies on stealth and mortal form, they are important to acquire if you're caught sneaking or ambushed by groups of enemies. For the sneak perks, I only focus on ones that increase unarmed damage like Problem Solver and Cloak and Dagger. Even though daggers do more damage, I was still able to take out most enemies with my fists. But if you want to maximize out damage, you can do a silent roll just before attacking and that's because the dynamic entry perk grants extra points to sneak attacks for a brief time period. Other key perks include Smoke Screen, a once per day power that forms a cloud to blind targets who will be unable to see your character while in sneak mode. Not only does it help to take out multiple enemies, but sneak attacks are also increased against targets inside the cloud. Clean Escape is really useful if you're using stealth mods like Realistic AI Detection that makes enemies spend more time searching for your character. Otherwise, it's not that mandatory since stealth in Skyrim is pretty much easy mode. And with Shadow Warrior, you can pot an invisible potion just as you enter sneak mode in order to escape and plan your next attack. For pickpocketing, I only invested in the mastery perks and this was only to place the human flesh or hearts into the target's inventory to trigger necrophage. As mentioned earlier, successfully doing so will not alert the target and it becomes an easy kill. Also, you can recover the hearts and flesh from the dead target, so there's no need to acquire their Brotherhood Cocktail perk. In the Alchemy skill tree, other than acquiring the poison perks, there's also the Alchemist's Cookbook. This perk will give you a power to create a pool of oil of your choice on the surface that can be detonated with a projectile or explosion. I went with the Paralyze option in order to set up traps, making the target an easy kill. Last of the perks we focus on spellcasting, as the Fiend will be using poison spells that are part of the Restoration School. First off is the Necromanticon perk, which adds 3 spells to your arsenal depending on your current level. You start off with Putrefy after acquiring the perk at level 40, then Deathcloud at level 50, and Karen Wind at level 75. All spells deal damage over time and they do stack with each other, but you have to alternate between spells in order to do so. So when casting them, I usually would have Karen Wind in one hand and Deathcloud in the other and alternate between each spell. Other perks include Edgewalker that can make the damage over time effects from poison spells more effective on targets when draining their health. Plague Doctor weakens enemies resistance to poison damage, stacking with the Creeping Decay ability from Worshipping Namira. And Chalice of Tears makes poison spells even more powerful since Lycanthropy is labeled as a disease. There's also the Descending Light perk where when entering combat, magic regenerates at a much faster rate for a short time period and this helps when casting the higher level poison spells to inflict damage. It also helps to cast spells from the sneak position to counteract the magicka drain from the serpent stone. Spell scribe from the enchanting tree also works in both beast and mortal form. By storing a spell which in this case will be Karen Win, it can be unleashed with a power attack from your claws without the cost of magicka. Since Karen Wind is an expensive spell, especially when dual casting, you're going to need some enchantments and possibly a fortified magicka potion to store the spell. While the poison spells are enough to get by for this build, there are others covered by the Odin mod that I used before obtaining the Necromanticon perk. Like those spells, Viper Bolt and Viper Blast deal damage over time and are what I used before acquiring Death Cloud. Black Hand, a continuous spell, deals a significant amount of damage over time that works really well from the sneak position. While it does cost a lot of magicka, having Descending Light counteract the magicka cost helps eliminate targets while they're still searching for you. Lastly, there's Poison Strikes, which inflicts poison on the target when landing a power attack. This also works in beast form by casting it before transforming, 
so it's another poison attack from the fiend's claws. Another use of poison is the spider scrolls. By using the poison cloak versions, they become very deadly especially when you have both the plague doctor perk and the creeping decay ability. Though I should mention that because of creeping decay, poison spells can still damage them since it happens to affect both allies and enemies, so they are best used as a distraction or they can accompany you when you're in werewolf form. You could also try out the other poison variants, but for me I didn't find them as effective as the cloaked ones. The jumping spiders would often miss their targets, while the explosive ones you have to lure enemies to your position. The cloaked spiders may not have much health, but a couple of them together can take out targets rather quickly. Another spider scroll to consider is the mind control spider, which can turn any enemy into an ally. What's really useful about this one is that it can affect almost every target at any level. Not to mention they're really easy to craft. As for the alchemy part of the build, potions I used were fortified restoration to increase damage from the poison spells, pickpocketing for better chances of placing the human hearts in the target's inventory, and invisibility potions for sneaking purposes. I also crafted and stock up on as many magicka potions I could in case I wanted to cast the poison spells from the sneak position. For the poisons, I mainly relied on paralyze, but only in certain situations. I did carry around a bow and dagger, so whenever I had to deal with multiple opponents, I paralyzed them with the dagger or used the bow to single out targets. In doing so, Necrophage would trigger and their health would be depleted in a matter of seconds. Necrophage is insanely overpowered with this build that can make things trivial, so I only rely on it when I needed or wanted to. As for the gear, you obviously want to have the Ring and the Mira, not only for the extra health and stamina boost, but also feeding other targets will increase your favor with the Digic Prince. Gloves of the Pugilist is also important in order to land some extra damage from your fists. The armor piece I'm using is the Shadow Warlock set from the Wombonger Armory mod, mainly because it has a more alchemist look to it. The boots come from the same set and I chanted them with Muffle, but if you have trouble finding the enchantment, you can use either Predator's Grace or the Dark Brotherhood ones. Strategy wise, you can either go Beast Swarm by clearing out groups of enemies or mess around with the stealth mechanics. I'd often switch to Beast Swarm when exploring Nordic runes and fighting the Draugr. While poison spells can still be afflicted on them, they're more of a pushover as a werewolf. Not only do the claw attacks do massive damage, but you also have a huge movement speed advantage to the point where they can barely land a hit on you. You can also feed on them with a savage feeding perk from the werewolf skill tree. Inside caves and dungeons against regular enemies, I relied on stealth using unarmed sneak attacks to take out single targets and poison spells for groups. Also, being able to hotkey an invisible potion can help out a lot. For the special moves, the first one I call is Without a Trace, and this is how you would disappear if you're caught sneaking. First, stand up and crouch again to activate the Shadow Warrior ability and use an invisible potion right away. Then move to a safe position and wait for 8 seconds. With Clean Escape, enemies will start searching for you and you can plan the next attack. Next one is called Rotting Flesh, which can be used against two or more targets. First, consume both a pickpocket and an invisible potion, then once you get within melee range, use the smoke screen ability. Afterwards, place a human flesh or heart into their pockets, and if successful, their health will deteriorate within seconds. Next one is called Disposal of the Body. By using the Perilous Oil from the Alchemist's Cookbook perk and placing a poison rune on top of it, enemies will be paralyzed when coming into contact with the surface, while also receiving poison damage. Follow up by casting the Black Hand spell and they're pretty much dead. I usually rely on this move for higher level targets in case their health was too high to take out with the unarmed sneak attacks, or if you're caught sneaking and want to take out a single enemy. As for the last one called Evisceration Plague, it involves the use of spiders and beast form. First, summon all your spiders, the maximum you can have out is 6 by the way, then dual cast poison strikes for a longer duration. Transform into your werewolf form and use power attacks when you can. You either do massive damage from your claws or unleash the carrying wind spell. This move is best used when facing large groups of enemies or boss types.
Before wrapping things up, when I did the playthrough of this build, I was unaware of a mod by Inesayon called Spider Bros, which is an overhaul to the throwing spider system. Apparently this mod fixes some issues with the spiders as well as adds some new ones, so it's worth checking out, though I haven't tested the mod myself. Another mod and this one I'd highly recommend is Apothecary. Not only does it overhaul the alchemy system, but it also adds some new potions that will benefit with this build. New potions include increasing unarmed damage, sneak attacks, as well as muffling your movement in case you can't find its enchantment. Also, it changes some potions to last 300 seconds as opposed to 60 for ones like increasing magic resistance and health, which is very beneficial in general. So the mod is definitely worth checking out if you're looking for a change in the alchemy system. That's it for this build. Be sure to check out the gameplay video to see more of it in action. Next week I should have a paladin type build coming out that's basically a combination of the knight and healer class from Oblivion. So pretty much another hybrid type of build. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Peace out.